If you had to make a movie, what would it be? Mortimer Goldflick? Oh my goodness, is that really you? Oh man, I am a big fan. I'm sorry to disturb your dinner, but is anybody sitting here? No? All right, great. I have got to tell you, I love every film that you have ever made. The postman always rings your neck. The first person I ever killed was watching that when I strangled them. Talk about life imitating art or, or death imit art. There's art in there somewhere. That's right. I said art. Oh, small world, huh? You and me. Speaking of art, you know, I just happen to have something right here. The little uh, 120 pages of pure brilliance that I'm sure would make this entire town forget about your little chinchilla incident if you directed this. Hmm? Oh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not eating with him. I've just stopped by to schmooze. But you know what? Why don't you be a sweetheart and uh, bring me a uh, Jessica Simpson sandwich on rye and a uh, black cow. Go easy on the cow. Anyway, I didn't come here to tell you about the menu. Came here to give you this. It's called Ninja's Song. Here's the pitch. So it's the story of this awesome ninja. Yeah, you know, they say write what you know. Guilty. Anyway, this awesome ninja, he keeps taking everything he kills and forming it into this giant ball that looks like the space station that we then find out is actually a giant space station that's being run by this crazy doctor who who has a time machine that he uses to go back in time and sink unsinkable ships. But to make matters worse, or hilarious, the ninja's caught in this love triangle with this woman that he's known for a long time, but the timing has never been just right for them to really get together. And this murder mystery novelist who keeps eating boiled rabbits to keep her flesh fresh so people don't realize that she's a replicant. So the three of them are going round and round. Meanwhile, this big shaggy dog gets bitten by a radioactive spider right after making a wish that he was a wisecracking cop with marital problems. His name is Shaggy McParker. Now, he teams up with the ninja after they both make a deal with God to teach an adolescent magician the true meaning of Christmas. That's act one. Where was I? This is delicious. Oh right, right about that time this pirate shows up and he has this ark that everybody thought was lost and he's gonna sell it to the New York Mafia to save his house from being torn down. Pretty standard. Little does he know that underneath his house is a lovable alien who's living with a quirky piano prodigy and an ex-gunfighter. But that's kind of a B story that just plays itself out. But the real action really gets going when the ninja and McParker end up in the Emerald City and they have to fight this half-African queen, half-raging bull in a game of pool. When they win the game of pool, thanks to a little help from an immortal Scottish robot warrior, they win this ring. And when you put the ring on, they get transported into a virtual computer world that's run by a giant white shark and his mother. But right about now, things start getting really interesting with the pirate who has made this deal with an animated ogre to build him a monster out of dead toys that breeds by planting its eggs inside a ragtag youth baseball team. Mmm. You are right. That Uso Buko is to die for. hey -ya! <laughs> Just kidding. Where was I? Oh, right. Once the pirate has enough of these little monsters, he actually teams up with the ninja. Because McParker, obviously, by this time, has driven off a cliff with his buddy from Nam after saving the community center with an amazing dance routine. You got the ninja and the pirate, a pretty unlikely pair. But they pull off the heist of the century by stealing the son of Satan and selling him to a child therapist who doesn't even realize that he himself is actually dead. Didn't see that coming, did you? That, my friend, is a clever ruse. But here's where it really starts to get trippy because all that has happened keeps happening over and over again with slight variations until the ninja figures out this code that was written by Leonardo da Vinci, who has to be played by Shia LaBeouf or I am walking away right now. I will not do this picture if it is not Shia LaBeouf or Jessica Alba. You know what would be great? How about a kabuki marionette voiced by Dane Cook? Anyway, once the ninja gets home, he finds out that his family has gone on vacation without him! After a pretty crazy party to raise some traveling cash, he sets out on a hilarious cross-country road trip with a British secret agent, a grungy groundskeeper, and King Arthur. You see where I'm headed? The whole thing wraps up, as you probably have already guessed, in a big Busby Berkeley production number slash death match that takes place in a football stadium that's slowly filling up with lava from an underground volcano that was released by mutant dinosaurs who I'm thinking can talk, and I'm thinking it's the cast of Ocean's 13. The rest of it is pretty much a standard Fellini, Spielberg, Apatow-esque denouement. Read it, love it. This is a hot property, so you are not gonna want to sit on this too long. I will have my people stab your people. You like it. I can tell by your look. You're thinking, I can do this. I would love to stay for dessert, but I have got places to hide and people to kill. Thanks for the question, Bradley. I look forward to final cutting you soon. Hey, yeah. Letterbox. I just got done moving a bunch of lava up from the earth, so I'm sorry if the goddamn chicken got cold. That was Al Pacino as a mutant dinosaur.